Buenos días. Eh, bueno, como ha comentado eh, Sergio, esta es la versión 3 de, de la propuesta de transferencias temporales. No. Um, so. ¿Es el botón grande? Pues no le gusta. Bueno, eh, rápidamente, eh, porque la... Let me tell you very quickly, because the, the slides uh, are almost uh, the same as uh, in the previous, uh, because the, the policy has had very few changes, and the current uh, policy of LACNIC only contemplate uh, IPv4 addresses uh, transfer permanently, but this uh, also considers the possibility of uh, temporar temporary transfers. The idea is to somehow ensure those uh, transfers to make it possible to allow for something in uh, that in the region we are not allowing for now that is the le leasing of addresses it's it's a, a, a proxy or sorry, a replacement and especially to benefit the smallest uh, those are the ones that have more problems for permanent uh, transfers because that implies significant financial uh, costs and of course the idea is also to promote the deployment of IPv6 because these are going to be of transfers of small IPv4s uh, that uh, tend to be uh, sim uh, enough uh, for uh, IPv6 only and IPv4 as a service. The text that I'm proposing now is marked in blue. The, the, it, the changes are tracked in blue. To the left, you have the current uh, text, and uh, to your right, the new text. And I insist that the changes are tracked in blue to make it easier to see them. And what we do in this uh, first item of a permanent transfer is saying that they can be uh, permanent or temporary, and that the temporary transfers can only be done, and this is one of the differences with, uh, versus uh, the permanent ones within the region. That's the first change. And the second change is that in the case of a temporary transfers, only one um, the beneficiary could uh, make um, um, could could receive a, a maximum of slash 20. Uh, last uh, time we said whether a slash 20 would be enough, and I think that the general consensus that I heard from the community, well, this hasn't changed with respect to the previous one. A slash 20 should be enough for all the most cases. This can be justified technically with IPv6 only and IPv4 with service with a slash 20, even if you have to um, uh, break and break it into many slash 22s and slash 24s, you could provide coverage to millions of uh, users, uh, hundreds of thousands. Of so it allows you to do multiple deployments with a single slash 20. The next change is that we are saying, and, and be careful because here it's important to highlight because uh, it's it's a bit similar to the previous proposal. We are not specifying like Nick how they should do it. We're just telling them to publish the transfers. Here we are speaking of a log. Not necessarily are we saying that it should be who is. It's up to LACNIC to decide how to implement it and to publish it, those uh, transfers. And But the most important thing from the point of view of what the community requested when we just debated this in the, the list is to specify when the temporary transfer is uh, uh, over. Of course, you can renew it, and then you have to replace uh, the date with the new deadline. That's what we are saying in this uh, uh, change. So let me see. And in the case of temporary transfers, LACNIC will uh, um, return uh, the uh, data to the original values when the final due, uh, date is due. So in all the changes that we've seen in the previous slides, 
versus uh, compared to the previous version they are basically or on the editorial changes the text has been changed a bit but uh, the meaning has not changed and here we have the, the the most important change because this text used to be there in the previous versions almost as it is but I just added something that uh, was uh, uh, that appeared in AP Nick and that is that the the um, receiver is not a valid uh, um, um, so if somebody receives a temp uh, a temporary transfer should n not be allowed to pass it to somebody else so the, basically this is because of what they said at a panel there are leasing companies that were requiring not to use uh, the addresses for abuse etc that should comply with uh, rpki and manners so the change with the previous version is that now we say although this uh, was already there, but more, we tell them more clearly that this is something that needs to be in the contract. Uh, LACNIC has to verify that the contract between the source and destination has these, includes these items, but that it's up to the source to check this. If they're not abiding by LACNIC uh, policy, that's in another part of the manual, and we, we wouldn't touch that. I think that that would be additional information. What's the situation in the other IRs? RIRs, it hasn't changed. And I'll stop there, so that after the uh, um, uh, impact assessment, uh, I may uh, respond to that analysis. Thank you, Jordi. We now invite Franco Cabrera from uh, the staff of LACNIC who will present uh, the impact analysis. Impact analysis, this proposal states, first comment, we consider that temporary transfers are a variant of the sub-assignments. Therefore, it is not necessary to generate any further element additional to the temporary transfer status. We stress the comment of the impact analysis of version one. We believe that temporary, trans temporary transfers LACNIC have to explicitly make the temporary status transfer status in the who is, including the relation with the original block and publish the information of the holder and the lessee. This register as a sub-assignment is necessary so that the receiver may comply with the requirements as a reverse DNS or creating the rows. Therefore, the staff will assume that these transfers have to be treated as sub-assignments. That is why this should be a requirement that these transfers are registered as such. And we repeat that the proposal under item 232.18.11, this includes the obligations for temporary transfers that currently do not apply to the final transfers, and these are not applied to the normal distributions. Even when this control should be done by the source, it is important to highlight the difference in criterion. Including these conditions might generate an effect that is opposite to the expected one. That's Comment number three. That is why we recommend that, as with the other sub-assignments, the final date of the operation should not be registered. And regarding comment number two, we recommend to specify in the who is the status of the temporary transfer. As regards the impact on the registration system and on other systems, we understand thus, as temporary if temporary transfers are treated as sub-assignments, the impact will be less on the registration system. Actually, this proposal has an impact on the LACNIC databases and other internal systems. This would also require coordinating things with the NIRs. Thank you. Thank you, Franco. Jordi, would you like to add something? Yes, let's go back to the last slide, please. So basically, to answer the different points mentioned 
by Franco in the impact analysis, what I must state here is that, in fact, this proposal does not state to do this in one way or the other. So if LACNIC believes that this should be done as sub-assignments, uh, that would be not an issue, uh, not be an issue. But what I would disagree with is that they view this it, it, not necessary to have a final date, but in the discussions with the community, it is quite clear that the committee did wish to have this. We can make the same observation as we made with the previous version. So this can be in a separate file containing that information in that way in our website and with a dumpable file. You can have the current temporary ones. And regarding the comments on 23218 on that point, as we excluded from the verification uh, LACNIC in the sense that this has been compliant, while the contract been, uh, between origin and destination contains this, if there is an issue regarding compliance with the policies, in that case, you have the other parts of the manual, so you can proceed accordingly. Thank you, Jordi. So having submitted this proposal, we will now begin with the discussion stage. So we invite you to participate, state your comments, and make your comments, give us your feedback on this proposal. We have three microphones in the room. For those who are participating through Zoom, you have the Q&A button, and otherwise you can raise your hand. Let me remind you that you have two minutes to make questions to the author, and they will then react accordingly. Let me also remind you that we have simultaneous interpretation, so please speak clearly. Those who will be coming up to the microphone, please state your name, your organization, and let us know if you are in favor or against. And if you're against, please explain the reasons why. Wesley? I'm Wesley Correa from Telecom ISP Solutions. I still agree with the spirit of this policy. I insist on my position expressed in the mailing list that the slash two should be sufficient for temporary assignments. Those who have the need to use uh, slash 20 should also have the conditions to do a definite transfer or buy that slash 20 in the market. I insist on this, but if this is what the community was, the slash 20, that is fine with me. I agree that we shouldn't have a deadline for, or a final date for these sub-assignments, because if the staff believes that it can be identified in that way, that would be the case. And let me explain why. Normally, contracts between parties have an expiry date, but they also are automatically renewed until one of the sides states that they no longer have this contract and that this expires. So establishing a expiry date for the sub-assignment, then automatically that sub-assignment would be removed from the platform, and maybe the rowers and IRRs would be deleted, and this would have a strong impact to the those who are receiving the sub-assignment. And let me add that I agree with the obligations for implementing IPv6, IRR, RPKI, because if we are in this community and in this market, as a minimum, we have to maintain a secure environment. Yes, let me add that there is no deadline. There is no prohibition to extend that deadline, but it what it states is that this date could be known by the community. It's not like an expiry date. This date has to be pu published, and if the contract is renewed, then that should be published. But there's no limitation regarding for how long you can lease this or how many times you can extend this contract. I apologize, Thomas. In the case of extending the contract, there is a need of reforming that extension or if you forget to state and that entry would be deleted. No. LACNIC automatically should be aware of this in order to allow this extension. You have to really check this so as not to add further workload to the LAC, to LACNIC staff. That has been considered. So please respect the two minutes assigned to you. And 
Thomas. Thomas Lynch, specialist in hats for sandstorms. I agree with this proposal. I think that item 23218 containing all the different points that you have, points that refer to manners that are more for those who lease and to be so to spell things out in such details in the proposal or in the policy ultimately. So that would be my minimum question, but if you want to leave it there, it's okay. And regarding slash 20 or slash 22, could you, we cannot hear you, Thomas. Shall I repeat everything? Okay, I agree with this proposal. And I'm saying that the list of conditions could not necessarily be included. I think this was referred to in the impact analysis that this is not necessary. And yes, the issue of manners. In the case of manners, this is like including too many requirements for the purpose of leasing. So if it is there, if it's not there, I would prefer that this would not be included, but if there's consensus, it's okay with me. And regarding the slash 20, slash 22, slash 21, I think this discussion shouldn't even exist, but if there is a limit, I then would agree on whichever limit is established. That is all. The conditions regarding that point in the different versions have been discussed in the community. There were voices that stated that this should not be there. But from my standpoint, there were more voices stating that these conditions should be included. So what I did was to somehow relax these conditions I had asked for Lackney to verify this, and this is no longer the case. What we said is this should be included, be included between source and destination. That is why I insisted on the fact that if some of these conditions are already in the policy manual, then it is the policy manual in the case of non-compliance. It would be that that enforces compliance. Manners is not in the policy manual, so there would be no way of enforcing this. But in theory, we are asking to include this in the contract. Thank you. Uh, uh, Ricardo Patara? Yes. I had um, decided not to participate because in other communities and philosophically, I don't really grasp the need for using a resource that was created for one purpose to benefit in another way. But nevertheless, we cannot close our eyes to the fact that this does occur. So I see that there is a good intention in having rules, and it is necessary to have rules. However, I don't agree with this text. And this is because I will be commenting on some of the points. And I understand the concept. We already have a text. We have a paragraph that deals with transfers. These are the final transfers, and it would be faster to adjust that text to take into account the temporary transfers. But I think, based on my conclusions, that doing so ends up creating some gaps for different types of interpretations. Let me give you an example. When you do a final transfer, there is a clause stating that a transferred block cannot be normally transferred over a given period of time. In the case of temporary transfer, nothing has been specified. And as far as I understand, it can occur that you can sub-lease an already leased block. So you get a slash 22, and then you get a slash 24. And this would not occur with the final transfers, because there are a clause there stating that you cannot transfer something that was transferred three years ago, for example. So I also am against the points mentioned by Thomas and others that create obligations to the ISP, like having the ASN and so on. Although this is perfectly well, and you have to implement this, these are best practices. But I disagree in including this in the text of the policy. Like you commented, 
this has to be part of the contract in some part, and LACNIC will then evaluate whether there was a breach to the contract. So they might decide if things get complicated, Roll might have an issue there, a problem. So to finish, let me say that maybe it's not such a good idea to use the already existing text to add further things in LACSNIC's system. If I properly understand, you can do sub-assignment of a block that was assigned to a final user. So if a final user wishes to lease a block, this cannot be registered as a sub-assignment because this is not allowed for final users. Those were my comments. To rapidly react to that, many of the items you referred to have been spelt out in the text, and specifically the one of not producing a sub-assignment of a sub-assignment. In that case, I added a paragraph in that sense at the end of the proposal. This was not does not exist in the previous proposal. Franco, we have two questions from the chat. Marco Salomon, we are in favor of the proposal. I ask, however, why should the limitation of the blocks be a slash 20? A slash 20, did you say? Why is a limitation of the blocks a slash 20? And this is because the proposal is aimed at facilitating the deployment of IPv6 of smaller ones. And with a slash 20 and using IPv6 only technologies with IPv4 as a service, you can respond to millions of users. So we understand that the slash 20 would be enough. We had the discussion in the list, including the possibility of withdrawing that section and just leaving it at any size. But my standpoint from what I heard in the community is that they wanted to have a limitation. The next question by Edmundo Casares. Um, but if they wanted to be in the context, should LACNIC check that that is met? No, that is precisely one of the changes between uh, version 2 and 3. In 2, it, it specified that it needed to be in the contract and that LACNIC had to check it. Now it's no longer the case. Nico. Yes, Nicolas Antoniello. I'm speaking for myself. Some comments. Well, to tell you the truth, uh, recently I haven't made comments in the list, but as Ricardo said, it's sort of some comments that uh, come from previous discussions, and I maintain my same position. One of them is I think that at least we should give a step, step back. What I mean is that first we should define the priorities, the priorities of the proposals, because sometimes I have the feeling that we propose policy that uh, is uh, too instrumental. They increase little by little. It might be a good thing, of course. This is my personal view, and uh, I, I know it's controversial, but I think that, for instance, leasing IP addresses, whatever name you want to call it, it's independent from the uh, definitive uh, transfers, and it's completely the dynamics is completely different to the rest uh, of the procedures because I think that that is happening. It's it's as easy as that. There are brokers that uh, it's so easy to go in and uh, to open an account and say, well, I want this block. The, only that. So again, uh, you have to define uh, the objective. What is that we want? Personally, me, uh, I, Nicolas, I want the, the uh, LACNIC registry to be always valid, always updated, and that policy should be respected. So I think that sometimes we create policy that is impossible to, re to respect because in reality uh, they won't respect it. For instance, asking that in a temporary uh, transfer it uh, should uh, go through all the process that you need the resources as in a definitive uh, transfer, a, a regular request uh, for IPv4 or IPv6 addresses. I think that this is something that we should revisit because I think that it is impossible for LACNIC to check all that, first of all, because of the speed of those leases, and then because uh, they're going to do it, whether LACNIC checks it or not. And then 
On the issue of imposing protocols and deploying some technical issues, yes, I also think, as Ricardo said, I think that we need to sign the prefixes with ROAS, etc. But there, there's a lot of literature. You are in IEDF. You know that there's a lot of literature arguing why you should or why you shouldn't. So if technically there are no clear definitions and there's a lot, a lot of what uh, backing one uh, position or the other, I don't think it's a proper thing that when we are defining a policy to impose that and even less to define it as best practices, if it's still under, uh, being debated around the world, I think they're good, but not everybody should agree. I don't want to repeat myself, but let me just answer the, the justification of the need. This is something that we've heard from the community. That is precisely one of the differences between the leasing that is taking place under the table. Um, contrary to current uh, policy, the community has said that they would agree with something similar to lease, but uh, being supported by an explanation of why you need it. Alfredo. Uh, Verde Rosa. Uh, like uh, as staff, we think that there shouldn't be a day where it ends until the transaction is completed. So the end date should be added after the leasing is completed. Uh, after the resource has been given back, because it wouldn't make sense. And the next thing, Jordi, I'm asking you, because at the beginning you said one thing, and now you're saying another, so I want to be sure. LACNIC is not expected to verify the contracts between the parties and ensuring that all these conditions are met. No, no, no. LACNIC needs to see to it that the contract meets uh, the uh, conditions, but we don't but not that they, yes, because LACNIC does not oversee the contract among third parties. What we require them to do is to sign the requirements that have something to do with LACNIC, but we have nothing to do with the contracts signed by third parties, nor should I, I nor do I think that we should. No, it, but what I'm saying is that if the community agrees, uh, well, LACNIC will be asked to do it. There may be many ways of, for doing it, not just uh, going through contract through uh, contract, there's going to be an X number, 40, 50, that will do leasing or use this uh, temporary transfer policy, and you're going to check uh, 40, 50 contracts only once, but in the other way, you would have an annex to the contract, including those conditions, and that there you should add each contract. It might be simpler than it actually looks like. Eduardo Jimenez, legal advisor to LACNIC, Jordi. It's not feasible. You can't go through each contract because each contract, there's different uh, uh, it's, uh, legislation in each. It seems very simple the way you put it, but in practical terms, it's impossible. But we could have an annex that could be common to all. But that implies you are contradicting yourself because that implies that LACNIC has to check all the contracts. No, an annex. Checking the last point of the proposal, but it's the same thing. The contract, each contract uh, between the parties will be ruled by the uh, laws that they agree upon, and each law is different. It sounds very nice, but you're an engineer, I'm a lawyer, and in law, uh, that certainty that you stated that, uh, that exists, it doesn't exist. Hernan. Hernan Arcidiacono, I have mixed feelings about this proposal. First of all, I would like this to move forward because I think that it really is for the benefit of the community to have an additional element, maybe different from what Nico was saying. But I think that there are some issues that we have moved forward. I'm not, I have nothing against that slash 20. It's clear that uh, consensus was uh, uh, sought uh, in the mail uh, mailing list, and maybe we should do a mechanism so that everybody would contribute a bit, so that by the time we get here, things will be um, clearer. But. I think that this last one, that in 18, I, I don't see it feasible. And 
but not only isn't it feasible, but I see that uh, it might inhibit some uh, to adopt this mechanism. So if we are going to uh, um, uh, uh, put a mechanism, uh, people should uh, um, uh, pay heed, because if not, so I think that uh, item six should be eliminated. Absolutely. Hernan from Kavasi. Yes, I also think that it's uh, uh, taking shape. And I have some things in favor of the temporary transfer, but I, I don't agree with others. I would say temporary uh, transfer, because I heard the word leasing. You, I can lend it, uh, you, yeah, I can give it the commercial form I want, but that is why I like the word temporary transfer, because it's actually what we are discussing here. And I don't like 11, uh, 18, 11. It's wishful thinking. If I had to put it in a contract, I would say it would be desirable to do this. Uh, so in, I repeat, I think that the policy is uh, uh, in going the right way, but I don't like this uh, that I mentioned. And finally, Americans have a saying that say, kiss. Keep it simple and stupid. If we make temporary transfers complex, people will continue to do what they're doing now. And nobody would apply it. So keep it simple and stupid. The uh, the person that in the end is responsible for the transfer is the person that has the registry to register today. So that person is accountable if uh, doing a temporary transfer. That's the way I see it. Thank you. Franco, the people in the room, yeah, uh, did uh, did that person ask in the bus? Yes, but uh, now there's a new question. Ricardo Patara, very quickly. I know that there were many comments about this last, last item, but I just wanted to add to what I said earlier. In some situations, it may touch LACNIC. The way it's drafted that our LACNIC should be like the judge in decision making. So although you want uh, RPKI to be implemented, it needs to be in the contract and between the parties, the parties should guarantee that the terms are uh, complied with. But then LACNIC will come and say, well, we I have to remove that because the contract was not met. And the other one, that completes the transfer, we say, no, uh, he's lying. I am uh, complying. And so it will uh, be up to LACNIC to do it. And I think that that uh, creates problems from my point of view. I understand what you say, but that happens today to day to with a sub-assignment. If we do a sub-assignment, even there, if there are no contracts, it needs to comply with uh, use of G. And if it doesn't, the part that is sub and um, say, I have to remove this because they are not complying, the situation would be identical. Well, more or less, because that would generate a commercial contract between the parties. But in the temporary transfer, you are involving somebody else, LACNIC, that needs to see how it's published. But in an assignment, it's also happening. The only thing that here we need, we are also requiring uh, an explanation of why it's necessary and that that should be verified by LACNIC. Well, Douglas, I'm Douglas from Brazil, as the colleague said, I have also mixed feelings. Uh, as a matter of fact, that is the word that defines it. I would say that my feeling is very similar to that of the validation proposal of, for abuse, because we struggled a lot, we move uh, uh, ahead and backwards, and uh, it was approved at the end. I don't think this is a situation, honestly, but uh, I ask you clearly not to stop, not to to uh, uh, um, uh, 
because we we have to separate uh, people with good intentions and people who don't have good intentions. Uh, my apologies if I'm I'm so factual, but it needs to be like that. So maybe not now, but it needs to be done. Contract between the parties or not, I don't know. But what already exists is in terms of use. Those that receive the resources need to agree with the terms of use. The terms of use are between LACNIC and uh, whoever receives the resources. So to make it easier, the terms of use should continue to be between LACNIC and uh, those that receive the resources, but with a sort of witness or uh, cross-reference. For instance, the first owner, I don't know whether you could call it owner or holder, that would validate that, but that would refer the terms of use. And under those terms of use, we should have reference to all these uh, mandatory issues. I do consider that these uh, mandatory issues must be there because we want to improve all this. And then with regard to the size of the block, I agree with Wesley slash 22, not more than that, because the idea of this is not to open it, but to make a growth viable so that things may occur the best way possible. And I would like to make another comment, but I forgot it. A second, please. Uh, my apologies. I'm going to give the floor to the next, and then I'll take the floor again. Yes, if you remember later, then uh, we ask you to send a list, or maybe you should uh, uh, check it later. Norberto, um, I am against the proposal because, first of all, you are adding an unnecessary burden to LACNIC, and what we are aiming at as a community is to promote the use of IPv6. There are mechanisms where you need to uh, to s seek for and uh, continue to evolve and go to another destination, because I see it as a step back. Because if you are incentivating that LACNIC should be in charge of temporary resources to sign it with RPKI, so you are going against the spirit of implementing IPv6 and start forgetting about IPv4. That's a key thing. And second, that is a problem between that uh, is uh, uh, leasing, uh, that is b b borrowing or leasing, and uh, the ones that are giving it. So if you are looking for a market that is cheap, well, those that give you the uh, leasing uh, show you the RIR, but not the RPKI, because they are unable to that. That's your problem. You know that it's a dream to comply with manners, but if you can't, you can't. And such a big effort for LACNIC to reach that objective, I think it's uh, spending unnecessary resources. The starting point, and this I didn't probably not explain this, is that leasing is not authorized at LACNIC, we're figuring out an equivalent way to leasing that allows you to justify the need, because in the discussions we have had is what the community has asked us for. So that is a starting point that we cannot rule out. We cannot forget, if we change that starting point, quite obviously, we have to find a different type of proposal. But that was a starting point that the community stated they wished to have, the justification of the need. Adelante, Franco, con las dos preguntas. Franco, we have a comment from Edmundo Casares. I think that the follow-up of the temporary transfers will complicate things to LACNIC. The text, the way it is, will add further controls that require follow-up so that the policy is complied with. I'm not going to repeat what I already referred to. And there's another question from Edmundo. If you're going to use the existing transfer text, the limitations of the recently received resources, if not transferred immediately, would these apply for the temporary transfers? That is explained in the answer. What we have is a maximum limit per slash 20 received. No further limitations apply. Someone has raised their hand in the Zoom. And then we will close the mic with Douglas, and then we'll close the mic. Genoveva, Genoveva Espejo, to use a microphone in the Zoom. 
Genoveva, can you hear us? The microphone is open so that you can ask your question. Genoveva, so please, can you do ask your question in the list? So I forgot to say something. I disagree with the suggestion of following the sub-assignments regarding temporary transfers. That has been mentioned in LACNIC's impact analysis. You can do this in practice. Have a slash 16, and I want to do a sub-assignment today of a slash 20. Is there anything that prevents me from doing so? That wouldn't change anything. So today's tech doesn't change anything at all. So if you do that sub-assignment, this could then generate rowers and reverse GNSs. So this will not be the problem. The issue is leasing IPs. done informally. So precisely that. So I am against that. But we need to really f somehow formalize this and have a co-responsibility in this sense. And the further important aspect is that the purpose of this is to prevent something from happening that is occurring now. People who have blogs, they sell their operations, they have a slash 17 or slash 18. And when sending, selling the I. SP, they take the slash 18, they take it to write and then lease it from there to here. We know that occurs. You just have to look at the routing table. That does not lie. So if we allow that to happen, if these temporary transfers occur here, then that resource, that resource, those who monitor the resource, and when the functions of LACNIC is analyzing the proper use of resources. So they're using our resources to monitor that. So if we keep that at home, I mean at home in LACNIC, the resources stay here, we invest here. So I disagree with sub-assigning because this already exists today. This is an informal way of leasing. And I want to clearly spell that out. Thank you. So thank you very much. Thank you for sharing your opinions. I'd like to thank the author. We'll give him a round of applause. Thank you. So let us now measure the temperature in the room to take this into account when measuring consensus. Let me remind you that even though we have the Zoom tool where the word vote comes up, we are not voting. We're just measuring the temperature in the room and also through Zoom. The result to this survey, does it mean that this proposal reaches consensus? Consensus is measured on the basis of the, of the comments submitted in the forum, and this is considered similar to a voting process. So we're going to do, to check the temperature in the room, I'd like to ask LACNIC staff to help us with the counting. So those participating remotely, can we have the poll on the screen, please? Those who are in favor of this proposal, please raise your hand and keep it raised, please. Thank you. You can lower your hands. Those who are against this proposal, please raise your hand. Thank you. Those who abstain, please raise your hand. Manténgala así un minuto más. Ya, pueden bajar. Muchas gracias. La propuesta es la que. 2023-7 en su versión 3, titulada Transferencias Temporales, culmina sus ocho semanas de discusión 
el día 11 de noviembre del 2024, por lo que a partir de ese día y hasta dentro de dos semanas, los moderadores vamos a comunicar a la comunidad si la propuesta alcanzó consenso. Así es que los invitamos a seguir la discusión en la lista de políticas.